But today we have with us none other than the man the, himself who got started and, uh, in business at a young age, have been at the top of several different major corporations, and he understands the power of business and also how to build a business. And not only that, decided to branch off and start his own businesses, and he has several of them going. He's a life coach. He's a teacher. He's also an entrepreneur, and I can tell you, I can go on and on about this young man, but what I'd rather do is get him on here and let him take time because his favorite book is B-I-B-L-E. And what does that stand for? Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. So uh, I want him to just share his heart because not only is he in, in ACN, but he's also a professional investor. Without further ado, my dear friend from Houston, Texas, great, the one and only, Mr. Dwight Williams. <laughs> Mr. Thomas, today I got I, I got my shirt on. Discipline hustle. Yeah, I'm, this is my I like that hustle day. So uh, <laughs> I got uh, I'm, I like to wear these shirts. The um, uh, I like to walk around in them. Actually, and people ask you questions. Anything to get somebody to ask you a question uh, that to create uh, interest. So, how's everybody this morning? Because I'm excited this morning. I'm really, 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 really excited. Mr. Thomas, I really want to thank you for uh, inviting me to uh, speak to this, this crowd of uh, top uh, uh, producing superstars that, that you got here. And I mean that. And I'm not pulling your leg. I mean, you guys consistently, you commit, and you come on these calls. I mean, that's a big deal. You know how rare that is? There, right now, the 60... 64 people on this call and there's 7 billion people on the planet and you the 64 that's on this call that get on this call consistently you don't think that makes a difference that makes a big difference that says something about who you are so <clears throat> i want to thank you mr thomas for you know considering me to speak to this this crowd of superstars that you know i'm trying to figure out why <laughs> Why I'm the guy that you chose to speak, you know, with this lineup you got. You got Mr. Is Miss Ismail, you got Mr. Lewis, you you got Miss Driscoll, you got yourself, you got Sam Foster, you got all these champions, and, and so trying to figure out where I fit and all of this. But I I am uh, I am I am tremendously tremendously thankful, and I I, I don't say that lightly. I you know, uh, and so we're just going to talk today. Uh, you know, if you really think about this, guys, uh, the, the key, the, the thing that accelerates everything is trust. And the, 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 the number one type of trust is to be surrounded by trusted advisors and mentors that can accelerate your pace and path towards your destiny. And to have individuals like Mr. Thomas and, and Ms. Driscoll and Ms. Ismail and, Ms., and Mr. Lewis and those people who are speaking to into you uh, each and every day? Who have backgrounds and 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 the rest of you on here, who have greatness in each of you, and to be able to come here and collectively come together to move yourselves in a, in a direction is a powerful, powerful thing. My favorite book says, "Wherever there's two uh, or more uh, gathered together." And he, he's in the midst. And whenever he's in the midst, he makes all the difference in the world. And so when I see people coming together to achieve something great, uh, and, and, and for Mr. Thomas, man, I, I got to, because in your own right, Mr. Thomas, you're a champion and you're a leader. And uh, so it, it means the world that you would consider uh, myself. So uh, think about it. This week, you guys started off with a uh, leap of faith. Uh, you know that's my favorite word right there. That word faith is uh, <laughs> is my is one of my is that's my, that, because to me that's the word that means everything. Nothing else matters to me than that. Um, uh, it, 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 I don't know how, how many of you know this, and and it is faith. And so it's it's not me bragging, but I I didn't finish my second year in college. Um, but most most of the people that worked for me all had engineering degrees. But not, not only that, but more significant than that, most of, I've trained pro thousands of people around the world. And most of the people I was training were engineers. Now, why is that? 
it's a belief, it's a gift, it's a faith. It, it's me doing things that 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 God inspired me to do that I didn't know I could do. And I can't tell you the number. I'm gonna tell you this. Every time I taught a class, and I taught weekly, every time I taught a class, I was scared to death. I, I didn't know who I was gonna meet. I didn't know if they were gonna receive or how they were gonna react, but it didn't really matter. I don't care about that, me being concerned or having fear. It's what I do when faced with that fear that makes all the difference in the world. So, uh, and that's what I came to talk to you guys about today. Um, uh, my, I, at my church, my pastor is, is, is talking on one of my favorite subjects. He's saying anything is possible. And it is true, anything is possible if you, what, anybody know the word? It's, it's a simple word. It, 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 everything, all things are possible to him that what? Believes. And you know me, I'm going to focus on belief. And, and, and Mr. Thomas says this all the time, you know, his favorite, favorite book is the Bible and his favorite word is faith. And that is true because nothing is more important to me than that. That is the key to everything. And we're, I'm going to, we're going to talk about why that, <clears throat> why that is so. Um, I, uh, I always like to uh, start off with uh, a story. And so to start off this story today, I, I, I want to talk to a group of people who, who, whose vision may not be completely clear right now, maybe a little dim, uh, may your future may be a little uncertain. Uh, <laughs> and for, from a standpoint of ACN, you probably think of yourself, how in the heck? I mean, SVP may seem so far away, not sure. How, how am I gonna get to that, man? <laughs> and it may, it may feel that way. You may say, man, Mr. Thomas tells me every time we get on the call, do something to move your business forward. And, and I, I wanna do that. And, and I think I'm doing that. And I think I'm moving in that direction. And, and I want to, and I'm trying to, but every week at the end of the week, I take the time, I look, and it doesn't look like I'm making any progress. And, it, and, and, and I've gone through so many weeks like that, I stopped looking. <laughs> I don't even wanna look at it anymore. But, and then I hear no from so many people. My family told me no, my, 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 my friends told me no. Uh, and, and, and of course, I'm not, not gonna talk to a bunch of strangers because if my family and friends told me no, they definitely gonna tell me no. And then they said, but use the system. And I think about using the system and I wanna use the system but the system tells me to walk up to strangers and to introduce myself and to talk. Why would I, if my family won't do it, then why would I do that? Matter of fact, the very opposite question is the real question. Whether my family does it or not, why wouldn't I do that? So what does that mean? Why don't I do it? Um, I, I always talk about the word faith. Faith means to me, uh, it's belief that causes me to take action. It convicts me so much that it, I can't not act. So yes, I get up and I go out and I move around and, and man, I, I just don't want to talk to anybody, but people come up to me or I run into people. Next thing you know, I'm talking to them about this opportunity. I'm at the, I'm, 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 I'm on the phone with a friend or I'm on social media and we're, we're messaging each other and, and I, I message somebody and they say, hey man, I'm not having a great day. Why are you not having a great day? I'm just, just not having a great day. Well, let me, let, so how can I help you have a better day? <laughs> so our conversation, when we, when, when our belief is high, our conversation, it affects the way we project ourselves to people. And that projection causes people to be attracted to us. When I'm overwhelmed by the stuff, by life and the stuff that I'm dealing with, when that stuff becomes so important and it begins to challenge. See, the key for belief is that nothing can challenge your belief. Now, I tell people, mentees that I mentor, that I have a cheat sheet. My cheat sheet is 57 years old. I've been a business owner for over 30 years. So my cheat sheet says, I've done this. I've been in a place of uncertainty where I questioned everything. And I've been there so many times and I've gotten through it every single time so much that I don't care no more. <laughs> Matter of fact, 
uh, I, I tell people that David faced lions and, and tigers, and because I mean lions, lions and bears, and because he he faced bears and lions, the the giant didn't stand a chance. Why? Because I mean, if he had faced the giant first, and maybe the giant could have kind of messed around with his mind. But if I kill a bear and a lion with my bare hands, dude, <laughs> the chances are you in trouble. And so the, the, the and so that's the thing. I have a cheat sheet. I've been in 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 hard situations so many times, and I've made it through them so many times till it it it, it it's not much that's gonna scare me anymore. It's not much that's gonna. And so you become reckless with your belief. You you start saying I can do anything. You start believing I can, there's nothing I can't do. And you begin to, to challenge yourself and you push yourself. You achieve one thing. You say, now I got to go do this. And then you do that. <laughs> yeah, I got to go. And your life becomes this thing that the Bible says that you move from faith to faith. From one challenge of faith, it strengthens you for the next challenge of faith, which prepares you for the next step. And, you, and each step along the way, you begin to push yourself to new places. And because God does, God doesn't really have to show up if it's something that you can do for yourself. He only needs to show up when it's something bigger than us. That's when you. And so don't you want to see him every day? So if you want to see him every day, push him to show up every day in your life. Do something that causes him to have to show up. God, I don't, I don't know what this person is going to say. This person don't know me from, from Adam. And, 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 and so, and this guy, he owns all of this. And this is a lot. And he probably gets people coming in. He like, but you know what? I'm going to see if you won't show up today. So I'm just going to roll up on him. And I'm going to holler at him to say what I got to say. And I'm looking for you to show up. And when I talk to that guy, I'm going to talk to him with a confidence that lets him know that you're supposed to speak to me. And this, this moment that you and I have come together has come. Because you don't know what else has happened in this guy's life or what's going on that's, that this connection is supposed to happen today. I, uh, I love to tell stories. And that there's a gentleman... And some of you may know the backstory of this gentleman. Uh, he was um, um, uh, and and popular, um, but at birth he was he was given up for adoption. His um, his uh, parents um, didn't want him. Uh, they were refugees, and um, they got rid of him. And they they wanted to give him to a rich family that was educated and and, and Catholic. Uh, but the, that family that they had found decided they wanted a girl and start a boy. And so they rejected him. And so he ended up going with a, another family, um, not really prominent, but educated people, um, um, and uh, grew up. His background was in, uh, his, uh, he was in the 60s and 70s, a flower child. He was a product of the hippies and and that, that, that free uh, um, world during that time and ended up going to college and, and dropping out. But while in college, he went to a class, a calligraphy class. And that class inspired him in such a way that it caused him to begin to think about how a new, a, a way the world could be. Um, and he had, he and his friends started getting together. He had a friend that was a, a tech nerd and they would hang out on, on days in his garage and they just try stuff. One of the deals they tried was getting free long distance. Uh, what a, what a chance of, uh, <laughs> we always got a cheater in the room. There is always a cheater in the room, boy. <laughs> no, but, uh, the uh, hanging out with his buddies, he was still in free long distance. Now we come full circle. Think about it. The ACA, they were trying to get free long distance back in the day. And they had come up with this scheme to, to get to get long distance. And um, and it had worked. And he, his friend, but his buddy, his name was Steve Wozniak. They would hang out in the garage and they would they would play with technology and 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 portable technology was on the verge was was in its infancy and it was coming into uh into the into the real world it was going to challenge what we call big computers and all of that and these guys were doing this in their garage these were kids 
And they just saw something and they saw it and they believed it. Every obstacle that they would face. Next thing you know, this gentleman builds a, a computer company that had a cult following. It had a cult following. People would buy that machine and they would live by it. It would break and they would they would buy anything else. They just loved it. They loved the brand. And the company kept growing. It kept succeeding. And it kept, next thing you know, he hires this guy, John Scully, who was the CEO of Pepsi. Now, this guy joins these kids, these hippie kids now who are building computers in their garage. This CEO of Pepsi joins this company. Uh, long story short, he ends up being the very guy that fires him. He fires the guy who created the company, fires him. And uh, so imagine hiring a guy, imagine hiring a guy in, in a company that you had built from your garage. Imagine that now. You hire this dude and this dude gets you fired. You lose a company. Now I'm not talking about, you know, a hundred, couple hundred grand. Uh, I'm talking a billion dollar company, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. You lose a company to a guy you hired. Imagine that blow, <laughs> the blow that that would give you. Um, interesting about uh, this guy, the, him and the CEO tells the story of his dad. He had found his dad many years after his success. Anybody know this part of the story? His dad had a restaurant in California somewhere. He would go there and eat in his dad's restaurant and his dad never knew, his biological dad didn't know that was his son. And the son that was eating in the dad's restaurant was the CEO of Apple Computer Corporation, Steve Jobs. God, can you imagine that kind of craziness? Like, so this guy builds this company, he gets fired from his company he goes off and builds what he called his revenge, which is a company called Next Computer. At Next Computer, I actually met Steve Jobs. I was part of a company that was doing training platforms uh, all over the world. And I had sold one of our companies to that company and I had gone in as a VP of sales for them. And one of the deals that we went to do was to do the, all of the training and development for Next Computers. And I met with Steve and a couple of his other guys. He's a tremendous guy, brilliant guy. Um, I say all of that to say he built that company as his revenge to get revenge on Apple for firing him. But in the course of building that company, he discovered something about himself and he began to transform. He began to change with his daughter and his wife and his family. This dude was a megalomaniac. Because many of us as CEOs and, 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 and entrepreneurs, we can be crazy sometimes because the dreams that we have drive us and they push us and we, are, we don't look like everybody else. And we seem abnormal and we seem crazy and strange, but the truth be told, that is what an entrepreneur is. That person, that entrepreneur is different. He's different. He's not the same. All of you know that because all of you felt it. You felt, I, I felt it many times as an outcast that I don't belong and, and the, but, but, but we have to become comfortable with that. We gotta become comfortable with not always be. That's the thing that gives you the courage to do the things that most people won't do. That's the thing that gives you the courage to take another no. That's the things that gives you the courage to face a person that most people would be intimidated by. That's what gives you that. That deep, deep belief, that deep, deep thing that makes you different. That's what, that, that's what those are, that's the ingredient that helps us to build the things we build. This gentleman went on in, 19, in September of 97, Apple brought him back. He lost his company, Apple brings him back. He begins to rebuild Apple. He transforms the music industry with, anybody know the product? iPod. Yep. He transferred the music industry with the iPod. He goes on to revolutionize the phone industry with the iPhone. He changes the, uh, the tablet industry. We used, to, we used to think we had tablet computers and notebook computers with these little bitty bricks. We used to, but when the iPad came in, it changed everything. 
And this guy went from a company, Apple Computer in 97, was on its, on the verge of bankruptcy. It's currently worth two and a quarter trillion dollars. As of May 2021, it has the largest market cap on the planet. But I have a tidbit, a side note that I want to run by you. This guy was such a believer. He loved to surround himself by creativity. So when Pixar was a startup company and they were making Toy Story, they needed money. They ran out of money. Steve Jobs, instead of most people would say, yeah, I'm going to do a business deal. I'm going to get in here. I'm going to buy some stock. Steve Jobs says, I'll give you guys $10 million if you just let me hang around at the studios and watch the creative process. So he did buy the stock, but he really got into that company. He really invested in that company, not because some value proposition or he thought they were gonna blow up, because he just loved to be surrounded by people who believe so much in what they did. They created extraordinary things like this group that Mr. Thomas and you guys have formed. You're an extraordinary group. And I promise you, as everybody's belief elevates, you will do extraordinary things. I promise you that. I don't care where you are or what it feels like or what you think. It, none of that matters. I promise you the circumstance you find yourself in right now can change. Like Mr. Lewis said, it can be different tomorrow. So you cannot allow where you are to begin to dictate where you're going. You can't do that. I promise you, your circumstances can change in a blink of an eye. So the key is to never give up, to never quit, never stop believing. This guy, he never stopped believing. Because he put that $10 million into Pixar, Pixar was eventually bought by Disney. That transaction made him the largest shareholder in Disney in 2006. Now, wasn't his plan, wasn't something he was trying to do and strategizing. It's just a person who follows the things he believes in. This is the power of belief. Um, I, um, give me one second. I'm, I'm talking to you about this gentleman. And the reason I'm talking to you about this guy is because he is an extraordinary story and a guy that won't give up. Extraordinary. And I, I'm really not an Apple guy. I'm a Microsoft guy. But the reason I talk, I talk about Steve Jobs, though, more than I talk about Bill Gates. Why? Because his story is so compelling. Rags to riches. He, uh, a person that from nothing to the top of the world. This guy's company is the largest company on the planet. And he's been dead for many years. For, I think since 11 or He's been, he's been dead since 2007, 2000. He's been dead over 10 years and his company continues to grow. That is the power of belief. And that is the, that you will get the same results in everything you do in life if you can believe so deeply in it and be convicted so much of it that you will just allow those beliefs to cause you to take action. If you can just do that, you will achieve everything in life you pursue. You will never fail, never. Uh, my favorite book says that uh, uh, blessed is the man who walked not after the counsel of God nor sit in the seat of sinners, nor, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And then it says, he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, meaning it's currently, it always has currents, which I'm about to tell you, is, is leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he does, everything he touches will prosper. He will never, ever lose. He will never lose. Yeah, I know people say, uh, how could that be true? I've lost so many times, but have you really? Just because something doesn't work out the way it, we believe it should, is it really a loss? Or if we learn from it and don't make the mistake anymore, then it's probably not a loss. It's actually a stepping stone toward a win. Um, I, I read the story of Michael Jordan says, hey man, I'm a, I'm a winner, not because I've won uh, everything. I've missed 9,000 shots. I've missed 26 game-winning shots. 
but that's the reason I'm a winner because I kept missing until I kept hitting. And that's the key. I kept getting no's until I got a yes. I, I, I kept getting rejected until I got an out. I, 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 I kept uh, not getting the service until I did get one. I just never stopped. And that is the only key. I, um, I, I, I told you that uh, he shall be like a tree where the rivers of water flow to. These are, this is currency. And so the, 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 the current, we, we are familiar with the currency of the stuff we buy, the, the, we go to store. The, that currency that we use to buy stuff is money. But what is the currency of money? The currency of money, most people would say is hard work. But the currency of money is not hard work. The currency of money is ideas and thoughts. Now, if, if, if I'm producing wealth with ideas and thoughts, one of the thoughts that I have to produce that wealth is to hire people to work for me, to produce that for me. Now, you would say, well, then what are you saying about me? Well, no, you, your idea right now may be to go to work for somebody to produce money so I don't continue to work for people. But that's got to be your thought. It, but it's the ideas and the thoughts that produce that currency. But what is the currency of the stuff we don't see? What is the currency of your dreams and your hopes? What is the currency of the things that you haven't yet seen happen in your life, but that you do want to happen in your life? Well, it ain't money. It ain't hard work. And it really isn't ideas and thoughts. It is belief. It is belief that you are so convinced of, it causes you to take action that produces the things that you want. I'm, I, am a, I will never stop talking about belief, faith, which is belief that produces action. You will never ever hear me stop talking about that. Why? Because of all the, the raw materials that is necessary to to fulfill the destiny in life that you created, it is the main ingredient. That one ingredient is the key to it all. And with that said, I'm gonna turn it back over to Mr. Thomas.